I would say the Kentucky Derby is probably the most difficult race to get a mountain. He's just awesome! It's really a difficult race to ride because you know it only comes around once a year. Oh my goodness! There's a lot of riders throughout the country. I think last year we had about 1,600. They're all in line. There's only 20 positions available. It's not easy, you know, because everybody wants to be there. We're always looking and trying to find that derby horse. I haven't rode any derbies yet. For us, it's the best race in the world. I've ridden in six Kentucky Derbies so far. I think I've ridden in five Kentucky Derbies now. I never had the opportunity to ride a Kentucky Derby. We have not won one yet. You know, we're still looking for that, that special horse. Unfortunately, I haven't won any yet. No, it's, it's a dream. <laughs> it's a dream. This is the reason that we get up every morning to participate in this one race a year. I think we have one on the horizon. Ready. Your desired commodity. Everybody wants you. I know. <laughs> I know. Okay. To get a derby horse, it's not easy. <laughs> There's a lot of research, a lot of horses to look for. I would have to say we're looking for the Kentucky Derby horse all throughout the year. It starts uh, when they're two-year-olds. It never really stops. But then it's a long way to get to the Kentucky Derby. The road to the Kentucky Derby kicks off in September and goes through the month of April and this is just an opportunity for horses to earn points by winning these prep races and the top 20 on the leaderboard get into the starting gate for the Kentucky Derby. Fierceness kicked off the year number one having won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile last year. This year's a little different when it comes to earning derby points. One of the best trainers in the world, Bob Baffert, can't run horses in the Kentucky Derby. So when one of his horses finishes first through fifth, those points end up null and void. It's not supposed to rain. Trying to get a mount in the Kentucky Derby is always tough because you have a lot of jockeys trying to do the same thing you're doing. You have to be fortunate enough to ride for guys that are loyal to you. And in my case, I'm fortunate enough to have a few good three-year-olds over there for Kenny McPeak, and, and we ride quite a bit for him. Just a couple weeks ago, we won the Southwest with a really nice horse called Mystic Dan. A dominant win! Anytime you want to prep for the Derby, you start getting excited, and you start thinking, man, this is my Derby horse. This is the horse that's going to get us to our first Saturday in May and, and hopefully win us our first Derby. You know, growing up, I always watched the Derby with my dad at the house, have a couple family members over, but uh, most of my memories are watching the Derby with my dad. It was, it was always special. My first Kentucky Derby was very nerve-wracking. The moments leading up to the gates opening, everything's going through your mind. Position, are we gonna get lucky today? They're all in line. As soon as the gates open, it's just, it's a whirlwind. It's Holy Bull Day here at Gulfstream Park, and the focus is on the return of the two-year-old champion, Fierceness. Right now, there's quite a few on our radar. Most of these tracks, they are competing on the same weekends, and it really is just judgment call. We are just moments away from the Holy Bull. 20 points will be awarded to the winner. He's trained beautifully, he's been training with Sierra Leone heads up. I think there's like three good speed horses. Right over my shoulder is domestic product. You can see Tyler Gaffleon just walking him around on the buckle. He's so relaxed, so unbothered by the big crowd we have going on. The champ is back. The number one rated horse in the Derby picture. Fierceness coming up empty now. Hades has the lead. Domestic product is out of time. DJ Stables, Hades wins the Holy Bull from domestic product second. Fierceness, he was empty. You know, up until yesterday, I thought Pierce Ness was a bear in this division, but he showed he was vulnerable. So it seems like the pitch is wide open. Oh, he's going to be nice. Oh, he's going to be nice. After the Holy Bull, I was really impressed with Domestic Product's performance. He was tugging. He won't be when they go real pace. I love the acceleration he gave me down the lane. Finished up really good, beating fierceness. So definitely thought we had a good prospect for the Derby. We are now at the Risen Star. You know how it goes. 50 points to the winner. You win this race, you're in the gate. Oh, yeah. Uh, 50 is going to get you in, no doubt about it. Going into the Risen Star, I was so excited to get on Sierra Leone for the first time. Just one of those horses you always you want to ride. I like Sierra Leone. I think that's my top selection. Yeah. One minute, boys. Uh, one this minute. one, break the truck Oh, yeah, look, my 16. Oh, yeah. Oh, bro, you got nailed. That'll take us to track Phantom, looking to sweep the series here. 
our main competition was Track Phantom for Steve Asmussen. He had won the local prep leading into it and seemed like the horse to beat. It's Track Phantom, resilience, chasing freedom in tight quarters between horses. Sierra Leone on the outside for Tyler Gaffleone. Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone does not disappoint. Right now, he's the number one horse on the Derby Trail. He was everything I dreamed of. Very responsive. Uh, just a lot of fun to be around. Uh, that was incredible. And after that race, definitely felt like we had a legitimate chance in the Kentucky Derby. This was the toughest Kentucky Derby prep to date. And we're probably going to say that five or six more times between now and the first Saturday in May. Big day today. Spanked in a lot of good things. Very sharp. <laughs> good luck today. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good interview this morning, thank you. I have a little bit of pressure that day. I had the favorite in the Rebel. There was a lot of eyes on the race worldwide. The big story here at Oaklawn Park in the Rebel with 50 points to the winner along the road to the Kentucky Derby and the return of Timberlake. I was very confident that the horse was gonna give me a, a big effort. This is gonna be the biggest race of Christian Torres' young career. And uh, we're off. He was unbelievable. You know, when I turned for home in the stretch, but I was smiling and happy, you know, that I that I was going to be able to win the biggest race of my career and, uh, and another prep race for the Kentucky Derby. Christian, Christian, 26-year-old Christian Torres, he has so quickly put himself on the map. Just because you win the Kentucky Derby prep doesn't mean that you'll keep them out. There's a couple horses that are going to be in the Kentucky Derby this year that I rode, and if I'm not there, I'll be happy that they're running in the race. Good morning, guys. The owners want the best rider. The trainers want the best rider. It's our job to make them want us. We'd love to keep them out. If something happens, we don't. It's a business, and uh, we just start over again tomorrow. Once we get to late February and early March, the Derby points start to go up. The San Felipe in California. Imagination in a thriller. The Gotham in New York. Deterministic wins the Gotham. And the Fountain of Youth in Florida award 50 points to the winner. Doorknock is too much horse. The Fountain of Youth stakes goes to Doorknock. Why do you have so many helmets in there? One's comfier than the other, one's lighter. Just kind of rotate them, uh, go through phases in like certain styles, so it's a good tax write-off. Leading up to the Tampa Bay Derby, I uh, was in a great spot. Uh, just coming off the win with Sierra Leone, domestic product had run well leading up to this race and we were very excited for this opportunity. Tampa Bay Derby was a race I always wanted to win. Uh, my father won it, so it's kind of been on my bucket list. The race is on in the Lamb Home South Tampa Bay Derby. Everything just kind of went to plan that day. And he has a really good finishing kick. A titanic tussle in Tampa. If it's any one of four here, they drive the wire. No more timer, domestic product. Obviously, very excited. Now we have two horses on the trail. He fired big here today. We got a couple weeks until the bluegrass to see how Sierra Leone runs, and we'll kind of make our decision from there. Well, Fabian Pratt wins the Louisiana Derby aboard Catching Freedom. He's about to catch a ride right now, just stepping out of the jocks room. This is the point where it gets really exciting because now the Derby points races are offering 100 points to the winner. And obviously you want to win these or at least finish in the top three. So jockeys are really eager to secure their mounts in these types of races. The Grade 1 Arkansas Derby. 100 points on the line as we're back on the Spendthrift Road to the Kentucky Derby. Muth. Bob Baffert looking for his fifth Arkansas Derby win. Up next, the favorite Timberlake with Flavian Pratt riding, taking over for Christian Torres, who won last time aboard in the Rebel Stakes. Leading up to the Derby, it's always interesting to see how it plays out as far as the contenders and riders. Uh, you might ride a horse for one race, uh, you can even win with them, and you're not guaranteed to ride them back. And it kind of happens to all of us. Here's the nine, Mystic Dan. Kenny McPeak and Brian Hernandez Jr., they've had a day. Four wins, and they look to add the Arkansas Derby. In races like the Arkansas Derby and the last preps of the season, the point system's kind of vamped up to where we knew he was a little light on the points. So in order for Mystic Dan to get into the Derby, he needed to run one, two, three. And uh, we're off in the Arkansas Derby. 
when you're riding, you can kind of tell that, you know, we're not going to win today. I got to the eighth pole and I was really trying hard to get us up for third to uh, compete in the Derby. And it's Muth coming down the stretch in Hot Springs to win it. Really big photo for third right here because Mystic Dan's going to land third. And he needed the third place position to get into the Kentucky Derby. I think it was a neck. It wasn't very far. He had enough points in and we've kind of just letting him cruise now. This place is rocking and rolling here for the Florida Derby. The crowd is just packed to the gills. Fierceness won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile at the age of two, putting him at the top of the Derby leaderboard. But in his three-year-old debut, he really didn't show up. So he had a lot of questions to answer when it came to the Florida Derby. How does he look to you right now? Since the Holy Bull, he's put on some weight, his coat's a little better. I think he's showing the right signs. Whoever wins and potentially who finishes second and maybe even third are likely heading on to the first Saturday in May. Fierceness is putting on a show in Hallandale today. Fierceness, the real fierceness, has showed up to South Florida and on his way to Louisville. The two-year-old champion comes back in raging form. What will happen in Louisville? We'll find out in five weeks. I would have to say Fierceness would be my biggest competition in the Derby. He's a defending two-year-old champion. Was very impressive that day, but uh, we'll see how it plays out. Hey, we're running after me. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Not even one year that I'm living in this country, so I never had the opportunity, had the chance to to ride the Kentucky Derby. I'm very attached to this kind of weather. Coming from Italy, coming from Sardinia, it's nice. Eh? Good boy. Hey, Joe. When we start riding strong gold, uh, we say, uh, you know, this horse uh, is actually <laughs> really interesting. So Stronghold right now with 25 points, sitting at 22nd, uh, at least a second place finish is going to be needed. I was actually feeling really good about it uh, because the horse gave me that, uh, that type of confidence. It's imagination and Stronghold, no! <laughs> Huge celebration from Antonio Fresu. To win the Santa Anita Derby is a great race, and uh, it gets you to the Kentucky Derby. I mean, it's the most prestigious race in uh, in the whole country. So I feel lucky. What a great day! What a great day! <laughs> it's one of the most anticipated days at the Keeneland Spring Meet. It's Toyota Bluegrass Stakes Day. So going into the Bluegrass, I was on a very live horse that already obtained enough points to run in the Kentucky Derby. So the pressure was off on that sense, but you know, it's his last prep before the Kentucky Derby. And they're off. Sierra Leone wins the Toyota Bluegrass. Chad Brown is going back to the Kentucky Derby with one of the main contenders. You've been on a lot of nice horses. How does he stack up? I don't want to speak too, too far in advance, but he's definitely up there. This was a rare season where everything kind of fell into place the way we thought it would. Uh, the horses showed up when we needed them to and that would put us in a really good position. So did you pick yet? I'm going with Sierra Leone. Kentucky Derby prep season is over and now we can see who's headed to the Kentucky Derby. Once the Kentucky Derby prep season is over, for some trainers and jockeys, it is a mad scramble. Agents trying to find mounts for their jockeys, trainers trying to find jockeys for their horses with only 20 spots in the starting gate. So after we made our decision with Sierra Leone, it opens up a couple doors for some other riders to try and steal them out from another guy. You got guys like Javier Castellano, he won the Derby last year. He's he's looking for a Derby mount. You can never be sure until your name is on the paper, you know. Of course, you will get like so many agents and so many other jockeys that they want to jump on your horse, but uh, I don't think they ever do good when uh, they keep moving people around. You really never know the full detail of it until you get out there and they start playing my old Kentucky home and just all the emotions start to pour out. And you look out into that crowd and they have 200,000 people there in the grandstands and they're all there just to watch that one race. It's, it's a special moment. It's a dream and uh, after the wire what I will think, uh, 
I don't know. I need to feel the moment, and I really want to feel the moment. <laughs>